Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our decessor tutorial on the generation of invoices using the RDPay system. The RDPay system is a trusted online platform designed for seamless electronic payment of services offered by the State Department of Lands and Physical Planning across the country. This system functions by enabling users to create invoices for standard rate payments and self-assessment stamp duty fees. The RDPay feature is accessible to private users as well as professionals such as advocates. Kindly note that all processes that attract a payment on RDSASA will have a system-generated invoice or invoices as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. To begin with, you will open your browser of choice and type RDSASA .lands.go.ke Once you land on the home page, you'll have to register and log into the Ardesasa platform. For more information on how to register on Ardesasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in this video's description. On the login page, you'll need to key in your Ardesasa ID or national ID number, enter your password, and then click continue. Upon doing so, you'll be provided with a one-time password code which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click Login. On the dashboard, you'll find a number of services listed under the various departments in the State Department of Lands and Physical Planning. To access the invoice generating feature, navigate to the left-hand panel and select RDP, which appears as the third option. Here, you will find two categories of invoices, the RDP service and the stamp duty self-assessment service. The RDP service category enables users to create invoices for standard rate payments such as the search and charge fees, which go at 500 shillings each. On the other hand, the stamp duty self-assessment caters for stamp duty invoices that have been determined by the assessor of stamp duty. To generate and settle an invoice calculated by the assessor of stamp duty, go ahead and click on the stamp duty self-assessment service. Upon doing so, you'll be navigated to the applications page. This page contains a comprehensive summary of all your payment history and receipts. The lists are categorized depending on the level of processing of the application. We have two tabs namely, Unpaid Invoices and Paid Invoices. The Unpaid Invoice tab features invoices that you have initiated but are not settled or paid for, while the Paid Invoice tab contains settled invoices with their respective receipts. For you to initiate a new application, click on the New Application button on the top right hand corner. You'll then be navigated to the frequently asked questions related to this process. These FAQs basically give you the idea of what RDP is, how it works, the payment methods accepted by the system, and any other important information regarding the RDP system. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to familiarize yourself with the important aspects associated with RDP. If satisfied, go ahead and click on Next. You'll be navigated to the Application Details page. Here, you'll first be required to select the location details. Kindly note that the fields that have an asterisk sign alongside them are mandatory fields to fill, failure to which will not be able to generate your invoice. Starting with the county, click on the drop-down arrow to populate and select the location. You'll also be required to specify if your stamp duty service is to be provided under a land registry or station. Click on the drop-down arrow to populate and select the office. Repeat the same steps to fill in the stamp duty process. In the case of this tutorial, we are going to select a district. The parcel details section requires you to key in the parcel number or a principal instrument in the case of a debenture. You will be required to enter the stamp duty fees. Kindly enter the amount as featured on the assessment slip. Enter the parcel number as stated in the ownership document. Next, you'll be required to specify the size of the parcel by entering the area size, which will not include more than three decimals, against a particular unit of measurement. Lastly, make sure you click on Add 
to populate the parcel details. The next section requires you to enter the chargeo details. The first field requires you to indicate if the chargeo is registered on Ardisasa. If yes, you will be required to enter their Ardisasa ID and the system will automatically populate their details. In a case where the chargeo is not registered, the applicant will have to manually key in their personal details, that is, their name, type of identification, identification number, and their KRA pin. Repeat the same process to fill in the chargee details. In the case of this tutorial, both the chargeo and the chargee are registered on Ardisasa. The last section is for additional details. This field is optional. It requires you to indicate any further information about your stamp duty service. If satisfied with your application details, click on Next to navigate to the Documents page. Here, you'll be required to attach the assessment slip provided by the Assessor of Stamp Duty. You can also attach any additional documents that provide more information about the stamp duty service, if any. If you wish to upload a document, enter the name of the document and click on the Juice File button to upload a scanned copy of the document from your local machine or device and the document will be listed on the right. Use the Next button to navigate to the verification page. Kindly go through the provided information and ensure that the details provided are correct. You also have the option of going back by clicking on the document or application details if you need to edit any information. If satisfied, go ahead and click on Submit. You'll then get a confirmation message that affirms that your invoice has been created successfully. Click on Close. At this point, the application will populate under Unpaid Invoices. Click on the View button and you'll be presented with two options. There is the invoice and the receipt. The receipt option is not active until you pay. When you click on the first option, you will be presented with the invoice. As you can see, the recently created invoice reads unpaid. Below is a unique number tied to the invoice generated. The invoice also contains the county, registry, and the recipient. You can also go through the payment description to note how the items have been categorized. Kindly note that the payment processing is facilitated through the eCitizen platform and for each generated invoice, there is a convenience fee of 50 shillings. A penalty of 5% per quarter, that is 3 months, will be charged on the stamp duty payable until the full amount is paid. Use the back button to return to the application invoice page. To settle the invoice, click on the pay button and the payment information will populate below the invoice. The first thing you'll see is the applicant's name and the phone number. Below that is the payment reference number and the total bill. This reference number should be used as the account number when paying using the official government pay bill 22222. Ensure your payment matches the exact invoice amount to avoid overpayments or partial payments. The next section highlights various payment methods acceptable on the Ardisasa system. They include M-Pesa, PesaFlow Direct, Kenya Commercial Bank, Cooperative Bank, Real-Time Growth Settlement, and Airtel Money. Select your favorable method of payment. Immediately you select either of them, the system generates a guide on how to make the payment. Follow the instructions to make your payment. Under M-Pesa, there are two options. There is the M-Pesa Express, which allows you to edit the applicant's phone number to whoever is paying for the invoice. When you click on Initiate, whoever is paying for the invoice will receive an SDK push highlighting the payment item and the total bill. They will be required to enter their M-Pesa PIN in order for them to pay for the invoice. The other option is the M-Pesa Pay Bill. Kindly verify the invoice reference number and accurately import it during the payment process. For stamp duty amounts exceeding the Mpesa limit, you can use the bank or the RTGS mode of payment. Immediately after paying, click on the complete button and the system will automatically synchronize your payment. Upon successful verification, the invoice will transition from the unpaid tab to the paid invoices tab. Click on view and you'll notice that both the invoice and the receipt option are active. 
When you select the invoice, you'll notice that the invoice has been updated to paid. When you view the receipt, you know that it has similar information as the invoice. You can download the receipt for verification purposes during the collection of the service you have paid for at the relevant registry or station. That's it for this tutorial on the invoice generation application using the RDPay system. Feel free to give your feedback in the comment section below. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscribe button to get notification on new videos as and when we post them. Kindly follow us on our social media handles as well at rdsasa underscore ke on Instagram and Twitter and at rdsasa on Facebook. Thanks for watching and goodbye.